Now we come to the first point of who uses PowerPoint and why. PowerPoint today is a very important tool for those people whose work involves a majority of presentations to be made, which uh, usually are in the marketing department or in the higher management departments, where they have to continuously provide presentations, provide information to either their customer base or to the senior management level so that they can relay continuous information which keeps on coming in on a regular basis, which is necessary to keep rolling in your new customers or to make the management aware that the institution is going as per the plans made out. So PowerPoint gives you a very important set of tools by which these presentations can be made in a quick time, in a very effective manner, in a very presentable manner with a lot of not only basic presentation tools, but also very nice and advanced multimedia tools also, where you can add in audio, video clips, etc. Okay, just to study the screen before I go any further. The screen that you see in the PowerPoint software, this is a screen which shows you the entire PowerPoint window that will be available at all times. Let's look at the parts of the screen so that you are aware about what I'm talking about. I mean, let's look at the basic terms in PowerPoint. On the top, you have the title for the file that we are working on. Towards the left, you have what we call as the quick access toolbar, where we can store some important tools which we use on a regular basis, which are stored permanently and which will be available for every single file that we open. Right now, there are a few tools which have been stored. You can keep on adding more and more tools by clicking this option of customizing quick access toolbar. This also we will cover in the chapters to come. Then you have these menus or the tabs which are known as part of the ribbon. The ribbon constitutes this entire section of these tabs and the commands that each tabs provides us. Like you have a home tab, an insert tab, a design tab, transitions, animations, slide show, review, and view. Finally, with help in case you still have a query on a particular tab, these tabs, along with their individual commands of every single tab, are known as the ribbon, which is an important part of the PowerPoint window. Towards the left, you have the slides, which we will keep on adding right now, like we have only one slide here. We add another slide here. So the slides will keep on coming in as a serial number out here. Under this also, we have certain different type of views that we can look. Right now, we are looking at the normal view. We have like outline views, we have slide sort of views, notes page, we have a reading view. I'll come back to the normal view. So this is how you view the window. On the right side, you have the vertical scroll bar, which helps you to move across slides when you scroll down or you scroll up either with your mouse roll key or you can click the up and down arrows on the scroll bar here. Or you can click on the uh, scroll bar and drag it down. The term drag means that you click the left mouse key and keep it pressed. Or on your uh, keypad, on the mouse pad, you click the left key and keep it pressed. And when you have slides, you can directly point them here. Similarly, on the bottom, you have what we call as a customized status bar. This is known as a status bar section. And this is known as your customized status bar options. The status bar gives you a lot of information like what percentage of zoom is it at right now. I'll try and increase it a bit. Okay, it's about 100% right now. The different types of views, you have the three basic views also pinned up to your status bar. That is, this is the normal view. This is the slide sort of view. And this is the reading view. And we come back to the normal view. Apart from that, here it shows you slide one of two. Since there are only two slides, when you get many more slides, it shows you the number of slides out of a total number of how many slides. You can customize the status bar as per what all you want to view. So you might not want to view all the properties in the status bar, all the most of them have been ticked out here. So you can remove what all you don't want and keep what all you want. All those, whenever required, all of these might not be required at the same time. So whenever they have been, they will be required, they will display on your status bar. And towards the right, you have these tools which uh, minimize your file, which reduce it to a smaller size and restore to the original size and close the file. And you have this button towards the left, 
which can hide your ribbon. The ribbon is again this part that we're speaking about. Okay. It can show only the tabs. That means these headings, these menus out here. And it can show your tabs and commands. That means the tabs and their commands. So basically one option means it totally hides it. Like for example, here if I click this command, auto hide, this goes off here, right? I click this back and it shows this out here. So that depends on how much of the screen area you want to look at. You can use this command to increase the screen size. So coming back to where we started, we start off with a blank presentation and we click on the file menu and which gives us a new option where I click on the file menu here. And if I click on new, here I get an option to choose from a lot of uh, pictures in front of me where one says a blank presentation. If I click on the blank presentation, it opens up another file like the one we had just did. I will go back to that again and click on file new. Now here, please note that you have some other formats along with the blank presentation, which are known as templates, which might suit the design that you are looking for. As we understand, PowerPoint is a specialized software for creating presentations. So presentations give us certain types of themes. For example, now I click on this styling and I say create. This opens up a file with this sort of theming at the back. The second uh, slide that I have added also opens up a slide with this theming. If I add one more slide here, then you get another type of slide with the same bordering continuing with this theming. And I can also go to the layout section and I can choose different type of formats. We will come to that. So you have this type of border here. You get different types of themes. So when you open a new presentation, you have two options. One is just choose the new and the blank presentation where it will give you a totally blank slide that is the one we saw out here. That is this one, which is a totally blank one. And the second option would be where you are using templates already loaded into your PowerPoint software, which enable you to use that particular designing which has been stored into PowerPoint, which is a very big help. Because sometimes it becomes very confusing as to what designing should I use and what uh, topic are you talking about and is it something to do with business you can click on this word business and you get so many business types of presentations here you have another presentation type you just click this it gives you a slight review of what here and what comes out here you go to the next one you come back to this one okay i like this one i click on create and a new file opens up with these are all the different types of formats used All this is preloaded, okay? So you don't have to waste time in inserting an image and changing your format and how does this look or how does that look. You can just hit and trial on some particular styles and whatever you like, you might just pick up. You can also add your personal templates, but currently we won't go through this. The basic, like these templates have been added already into PowerPoint, you can add your personalized templates where you can create a particular design and you can save it in the computer's software folder. And these templates will also show when you click on file new, apart from the templates already showing, the one that you create will also start showing here. Because if you like a customized template, then you can use that one. Like these are some of the theme templates which are customized and built out here, which are reflecting out here. Okay, these are not part of the standardized ones. So you can build your own templates also. This, I have just inserted a picture for your reference so that when you uh, view this presentation again, this is what we just spoke about, where we go on file menu and we click on new and we have two options here. One, we choose a blank presentation. And second, we choose a theme. That is a preloaded template sort of thing. Next, once we have started a file, we have created a file, we would like to save that file so that then we can start working on that file and keep saving on that. So how do we go about doing that? For example, this new file that we had started, there are 
two points to be noted out here saving files for the first time and saving subsequent times for the first time you will need to select the save as option and for the subsequent times you will need to click on normal save here if you will notice when you click the file tab that is here you have save as and you have save also i'll come back here i loaded this picture out here in the next slide so here please note that for the first time you will need to click the save as option so when you click file and you click on save save as option will appear and when you click on save as your pathway of opening the save as direction open this is the window to where you want to save your presentation in either your hard drive or on your one drive you will have all the options available you can either choose a pathway from here but a simpler form for beginning users would be click on the browse window this opens up a saving window where it tells you on which drive do you want to go first out of that drive on which folder do you want to pick up in that folder do you want to have a sub folder in which you want to share it and then in that sub folder do you want to further create a sub folder and then finally save that file with whichever name you want to okay. so that is how you go about saving that file now once you have saved it as a save as file it has been stored on the computer on a particular path so the computer recognizes that this is where the file has been stored and there is no need to do a save as function again because a particular path has been allotted to that file and that file will continue to stay on that particular area where it has been saved and for the subsequent times whenever you want to save you can just go to file and click on save you don't need to click on save as again and again and you just click on save it will save your file immediately it will not take you through the whole process of again locating a path creating a folder creating a subfolder and then saving again the shortcut for saving is control plus s firstly by shortcut i mean is just two or three keys which can be used instead of using the traditional tab that we use that is going to the tab and then under that selecting uh, another key command if you are generally used to using your keyboard you can just press control along with s here the plus sign it does not indicate that you have to type in a plus sign that means that control and s have to be pressed together so please note that in all the shortcuts that we discuss in future also the uh, plus sign is not an indicator of actually using the plus sign but it is just meaning to say that you press control and s key together so i print press the control and s key together and my file is saved so till now basically you have opened a powerpoint presentation file and you have saved it now let's come at the next part in your powerpoint stage where you start inserting slides before coming to that there are a couple of things more firstly i would like to tell you that you can save your slides as graphic files also please note carefully here that when you try and save your files as graphic slides then every single slide in your presentation that you have created for example a presentation might have 15 different slides that you have inserted so when you save it as a graphic file all 15 slides will be saved separately in a common folder so they will result in 15 separate files here you can see these uh, the square which is made up by these five sections which are the graphic file formats that is a gif file a jpeg file a png file a tiff bmp so all these will form the graphic file formats so ideally it is advisable that if you need a particular sli slide to be used elsewhere as a jpeg file or any other format so when you save it as a graphic file it is usually advisable that if there is any one particular slide the information from that particular slide that you want to might save separately as a picture file then you could do that the process how to go about that is you click on file again because file is the tab which does all your saving and closing and opening part here you have new you have open you have save you have close you have export you have share so this file tab controls the opening closing saving sharing your file etc and 
when we are saving this let me go let me keep the pathway same where i have saved this file but what you have to do is when you are selecting the type of file you can click browse again to come to an easier system you will have the browse folder in this i will select a particular type of graphic file let's say i pick up a jpeg file and then i say save now this slide comes which says that which slides do you want to export so this sign asks you that do you want to export all the slides that means create graphic files of all the slides so currently like this file that we are viewing has about 33 slides so all 33 slides will get accumulated in a particular folder which will get created in that pathway that we have mentioned and all 33 slides will show separately which is which is not desirable so you can click on just this one and then go ahead with it you can save your slide text as a text file also in that you will have to save your file as a rtf format file the advantage of this is that you can view it in a normal word format so if you want to view your file in a word format so you will have to save the file in an rtf format again when you are trying to save it as a save as file you will have an rtf format option where you can save it there. lastly coming to uh, save options in the saving section under the file tab you have an options box where you will have a save section under the save section you have certain preset settings idly not advisable to change any of these where it says how soon does the computer do auto recovery that every 10 minutes it does an automatic save where does the computer's auto recovery what is the default file location various settings about saving I i'll not go too deep into this preferably do not mess with the specifying save option because it is not advisable to so the next part that we will be exploring is how do you set passwords for your file i have put in the picture also out here although this is of the old format i'll be showing you in the newer versions also this is among the older versions of powerpoint in the newer versions again we will be using the file tab here we can click on info and here you have a protect presentation box you click on that and you have an encrypt with password option you click on that and you are supposed to give a password if you give an ok sign it will ask you for the same password again and you can give an ok on that so that is how you save the passwords this process way that is written is for the older versions where you can save it in this system also so all these steps are noted down you can easily save your file closing and opening again from here you can do file close and you can do a file open in case you click on file open you will have to go to either your recently opened files will be mentioned here or you go to browse and choose the file that you want to open right and closing again directly if you click on this the file will get closed in case there is any unsaved data the computer will ask you that do you want to save the unsaved data and you obviously give it a yes or in case you want to ignore the file then you can say no 